All right, so now it just moved into the Spyro folder. So now we will go to the PSP. Now before I go any further, there's something really important I need to mention. You need to make sure that your PSP firmware is a custom firmware and also one of the latest ones. I have the very latest of um, December 22nd. If you go into System Settings, under Settings, you can go down to, all the way down to a, a System Information. And you'll see that I have 3.71, then an M33-4 adjacent to that. Go to back, and um, if you do not have the latest, or if you're not sure on how to get the latest, check into the description of this YouTube video, because I put in a link that will uh, pretty much explain everything you need to know, no matter um, what version you're coming from, and you can also check out my downgrading your PSP tutorial for additional help, but I can't actually make a, um, a video to upgrade to this because first, first of all I already have and I'd have to downgrade and um, that would take a lot of time and the second reason is because I would have to upgrade, downgrade, upgrade, downgrade about I don't know how many times but there's many many firmware versions out there so rather than go through all that hassle simply go to the link and I hope you're a good reader because there is no video for that but once you have compatible firmware that is custom go over here to game and then click on memory stick wow there it is Spyro the Dragon go ahead and click on it this screen will come up depending on your uh, firmware it will probably look different It'll work exactly like a PlayStation 1. There's no lag. It's, uh, I'm not exactly sure how the loading times compare, but I, uh, I didn't notice any, any problem with that at all. So, we'll go down here to start. Accessing memory cards. We're going to select slot 1 and you'll see I already have a game saved. What's so great about this is it actually emulates a memory card so you have no trouble saving your games. Um, I'm going to load the game I already put on here. Because then we don't have to listen to the intro and everything. All right? And you'll see that it works fine, it's graceful, everything is crisp and clear, but I didn't get to this point by, uh, I kind of cheated a little bit because I changed some settings. So, if you click on the home button, you'll see this convenient menu. First of all, um, I changed the button, so click on assign buttons. How it comes set up initially, your analog stick, if you go to the left, it's same as the R2 which of course there is no R2 on the PSP, just an R. Only one rather than the two. So that's what they did to compensate for that difference. If you go to the right, then it's for the L2. And if you go up, it's the same as hitting both. Um, also, this is how you would move. These buttons are all the same. Another type, well, there are several types. You can uh, look through them for yourself. What I like is Type 3, and the reason why is because it allows me to use the analog stick. If I want to hit R2 or L2, I simply go R2, L2, or both. These are all the same. So, once I've selected that, I hit X, and then there's a software manual, if you uploaded it with it, and then there's settings. Now, the screen mode, this is how, it, how it's set up. This is what the screen mode usually looks like. It's small and there's letter boxes around the entire frame. You can click on normal and I'll zoom in a little bit. Click on zoom and I'll zoom in all the way without distortion. 
but what you'll notice is that some of the screen is missing because it's zoomed out so far and then there's full screen which will simply stretch the picture from corner to corner but it'll, it'll um, have distortion 